once more, Gloves Off is always on the quest for the best. These feature segments are about the culinary experience. Service. Taste. So enjoy Gloves Off Eatery Biz. Hello guys, I want to wish everybody a great day. I hope everybody's doing well. Thank God I am. Today we're searching for another icon restaurant from, from Laredo, one that's been open way about 20 years plus, 25 years, easy. And that's Fuddruckers. It's a home of some great hamburgers. I know it. I know the majority have heard of it. Of Fuddruckers have seen it because it's right next to our to our mall right there on Hillside. And uh, today we're going to go talk to the owner, entrepreneur, rest restauranteur. Celestino Marina and talk about how he got involved with such a franchise such a restaurant because number one uh, they say it's one of the best burgers you know everybody's going to say water burger but believe me you have to try it out and uh, it's situated once more to tell everybody that, that, that doesn't know where it's at it's right next to the mall where Sears used to be across the street on Hillside it's a great place so here we go. Stay tuned. Excuse me. Oh, sorry. How are you? Good, good, good yourself? Very good, very good. We're here sitting down with the owner of Fuddruckers, and we're going to touch base on why the restaurant was made, and because it's become an icon here in Laredo. How are we doing? We're doing so good? far, so good. So far, so good. Thank you for asking. Tell it, me. It's, it's always a pleasure to see you. Thank you. The same in here. The same in here. The, uh, the question that I have is, how did you get, get involved and say, you know what, I'm going to become a... And you've always had that entrepreneurship, but how? What did you say? I'm gonna go into the restaurant. What happened? Well, I, mean, I went, especially this school. Well, no, no. I went to school at the University of Houston, the Conrad Hilton School, at U of H. But I had my grandfather on my side, that side had a had a restaurant at Custilo Ope, which is El Mirador, in, in Mexico City. And then I have a, an uncle that is historic hotel and restaurant manager, but in Switzerland, he passed away last year. Certainly. And uh, I guess I had it in my veins. So whenever I decided to go to architecture or, or hotel restaurant management, I really wanted to study overseas. But then my uncle told me, no, you have to mo go more with numbers. So there is more service. And the service, because you have it in your house. So, you, I mean, you are educated differently. So I don't think you need to go to, for the service. So that's why I went over there. I got my degree. I got my degree back in 1981. And uh, from then on, because I worked for Hyatt, I ended up to be a food and beverage assistant director, and I was going to go to be transferred to the Hyatt in Puerto Rico as a food and beverage manager. But then my parents, you know, like, I don't know, I guess I become to the, to the era that we would pay more attention to our parents. They said, no, if you go to Puerto Rico, we very seldom going to see you. We barely see you here that you are in Houston and all that. So my, plan, my dad planned uh, to retire because we, uh, they had a pilon, my little sister, so they said, I'm gonna retire and I wanna leave you the business, which is Custom House Broker. And my dad was a Custom House Broker since 1951, 52 here in Laredo. So, and my great grand uncles were Custom House Brokers, so that was on my dad's side, the field e to be in. But you know, like, I, I, I like being in the service, and uh, each of those business have, are very jealous, I may say. Let me see right here. Okay, back. Five, four. We're back with the rest. With the cost of broker, broker and the, and, and the, uh, the uh, restaurant field. So I guess I had both, and as I was telling you, both, both, both uh, businesses, you want to call it that way, or action to live your life, are uh, very jealous. 
So my dad passed away at a very early age. We died at 56. And then uh, we were cut in the middle and we started doing this because it was my dad's favorite restaurant in, in Houston. All the for rockers started in San Antonio, which we no longer have for rockers in San Antonio, due to whatever the reason. No, right now we have a, a new company that owns us, but this is the sixth company we've been through. And uh, really seven because he went from private to public twice. So if you consider that this is the seven common stuff, so I feel like some of us do deserve a, a gold medal for being under different owners and still survive, honestly. That. But we survive if we cater to you all, not your guests. Uh, absolutely. You know, Fuddruckers has always had, had a distinct flavor, different than other hamburgers. What do you think that is? What's the difference? Well, we have fresh meat and it's 2080, never frozen. And uh, that's number one, and we make our own uh, our own season is ours. So it's so the flavor you have it everywhere, and we make our own bread. Everything is fresh, and we use quality items. I mean, it's not like you're gonna put not to say nothing about it, but X Y Z brand that doesn't even have a brand. So we will use uh, and you know you put butter. Instead of light butter, it's gonna taste different. I guess that's the key word. Use the real things and, and don't don't preserve it for too long and, and do not use preservatives. So that's the difference, just like being at home. And Absolutely. that's what I've been trying to accomplish. Yeah. And it and it and it has worked for 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 Yeah, yeah. because every I mean I mean if you I, I always have said if I'm not a stupid Juan, the guys will be stupid. You know, if you go by that way of thinking, because I guess you won't fail. It's like, for example, like the other day, for the first time, I got one thing. Say, hey, somebody return a burger, and I say, I don't know, it tastes very weird. I mean, remember, you asked for a burger, medium well. I mean, what did you put on it? He said, so you're gonna blame it on me? No, man, but you make your own. But let me tell you what happens to me. Sometimes I confuse the barbecue with the ketchup, and I don't like barbecue. But I mean, what changes? Don't worry about that. But don't blame it on us. You make your own. I mean, we just have the beef. So, and then she started laughing. And I said, you got me there. You so, uh, so um, you're, you don't go to a restaurant to, to complain, and neither we want to get any any complaints because we're here, I guess, to provide a happy service for everybody. That's, and that's to, what it is. And to make everybody comfortable, like they will be in their own house, with with, with the without the pain of washing dishes, I guess. No? Absolutely. Now, which is out of all the burgers that you have, which is the burger that everybody asks for? Bacon cheddar. And then I guess it works, which is you have your choice of, of cheese. It can be four different choices from Swiss to pepper jack, uh, uh, blue cheese, and has bacon and mushrooms, that's the works. And then the sweet smell that has Swiss, grilled onions and mushrooms, and also the Southwest, which has avocado. And it's weird because, you know, a lot of places advertise that this month they're gonna have this and they're gonna have this. We always have it on the menu, so. And the best part about it is like, you see that people are not still not used to come here because, you know, I don't want any pickles. No, I don't want this. He said, no, ma'am, you make your own. You will only give you the bacon or the cheeses. The type of bread, which is either wheat or regular bread or gluten-free. And the rest, make your own. A small bread, you can have your burger, the, the one half in a small bone. I mean, right now, people that know, so they, they know that we're here to cater them. I don't want to hear from any of my associates that it cannot be done, no? The work here and everything is done. Absolutely. Well, let's try one. Let's see what- Yes, of course, you want one. Let's, let's, let's try to see if it, it, it service, okay? How you how you like it, cook? Let's go with medium. Perfect. To we, make do, we make do and we adapt. We have to adapt, that's the only thing, you know, and right now with the new company, they're making us change a lot of things. And I said, I think one of the successes of all the restaurants, I guess, is, is well, and every business is consistency, you know? Absolutely. Once that you have that consistency and you cater to your guests, I mean, you have to understand that number one. And then you become like a psychologist, you know, your guests, they, your guests know you better. So, you know, at the, at the end, your guests start helping you, you know, so something is wrong with the ranch. And then you try the ranch and they say, oh my God, what happened to here? And thank you, you know, right now we make the, the, the ranch and the honey mustard from scratch. Most of it, most of our products are from scratch. It's important a lot of, of all the, the dressings that people are more used to because they get them somewhere else and they have to provide it for them. Absolutely. But our ranch is Laredo famous too. Honest to God, they got, sometimes they want to run ranch. But we don't charge extra for that.
Aquí por la puerta, por la puerta, por la puerta. Gracias, mijo. Oye, ¿me traes de los otros cubiertos, please? Eh, los de metal. Eh, ¿Cubiertos? ¿Un cuchillo? Dos cuchillos, sí. Sí. Look at that burger with those mushrooms. Look at these mushrooms. Yeah. Looks good. Looks oh, good. Very good. Looks good. Now let's look at that Caesar salad. This is a, the chicken salad. This is a chicken, but you can have it salmon, fish, beef, steak, and veggie if you want to put a veggie burger there. You can do whatever you want, You, but this is one of the different salads that we have, but we have the Southwest and we have the country. We have also crispy chicken. And these are the condiments that you can use in your burger. Correct, we and have from dice, tomato, dice onion, sliced onion, pickles, uh, peppers, sweet peppers, uh, shredded lettuce, cap lettuce, and pretty soon, hopefully, I'm just you know, hopefully I get out for us to use also the uh, baby spinach. But uh, that's on hold until the preparations are done. But anyway, called the works has mushrooms, has bacon, has cheddar cheese. We're gonna taste that in a minute. I'm gonna go ahead. And actually, gonna I'm gonna put an onion. I'm just gonna set this on top. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it with a with a knife. It's a little bit too big. But look at the size of the burgers. Just look at that. And it's real, eh? And it's all real, you know? This is, this will take you back to birthday parties and stuff like that when you were a kid. Or, you know, as we were talking before, hamburgers are part of the Americana cuisine and nowhere, everywhere in the world, you always have a burger. No matter where you go, you're gonna have a burger. And that burger is go going to be a little bit different you know because usually it's it's one of the franchises that that uh, that you see is like um, you can go to South Africa you're gonna have a burger okay. you're gonna go to Russia they're gonna have a burger burgers have become no, worldwide no, no, not only that you know in, in every restaurant in the United States you have an option from uh, the, the cheapest one to the most expensive one you have an item which is a burger on their menu absolutely Absolutely. So right now I'm going to take a bite here and I'm going to tell you guys how it, how it tastes. Take it from this side. Let me get you. Number one, the burger's great. The meat is well cooked. And I suggest that everybody should bring, bring your kids, bring your wife, bring yourself in here, treat yourself to lunch. Right now that spring break is going on, bring them out, out here. And um, it's a great time. You can go shopping across across the street with the mall, and afterward come over and have a burger here at Fuddruckers. We're gonna have a, we're gonna touch base a little bit more with Mr. Marina about restaurants and so forth of what's going on, and and take it from there. Much peace. What has what has happened to the restaurants in general during COVID? Because every, every, every all the businesses took a took a pounding. Yeah, what but happened? I believe that the business took the hardest will be probably shopping centers, restaurants, and not so much the people that had drive through because the ones that they or they still doing drive through they did a kill because people, even though they were not supposed to be up, they will go to ask for a, a burger. And it's not the same to be on a curbside because the restaurants that have curbsides because we're not set up for drive through because our food is not fast food. It's really real food. And that's the issue, and mostly when you you make your own. So we did serve for that. We never advertised to COVID because the purpose was to have the people in their houses and not to expose them. Little or not, little affected or not affected, but uh, just uh, to keep everybody safe, whatever the the, the the health organization will determine. But right now, it's been very hard because nobody really understand the the uh, amount of people that the restaurant people hire for example for me to run a, a restaurant that opens 
seven days a week, you need at least 50 people, and right now we're running it with 20. And, and it's hard as you, uh, we, as we open the bridges, it's very hard as you will know because nobody's getting any employees, that's number one. Because if a dishwasher wants to make the salary of an engineer, it's kind of impossible. And those are things that are hard to level and all that. And, and the, the worst is that are more taxes and more taxes. And it's not the same to be taxed on a seven dollars an hour than to be taxed at a 10 or a 20 or a 15. But you have another preparation and everything. And COVID pues, did its damage. A lot of restaurants, a lot of chains closed. Even, even companies that uh, were built to cater supplies for restaurants are gone, are gone, are gone, and it's very hard to, for us to make it, to see where we're gonna get as options. And that's only for items for the restaurant, but you see all, uh, people, all, all kind of business uh, were destroyed. And little by little, hopefully we'll come out by doing what you are expected to do, no? And, uh, and hopefully people, the people here, my guests, have, have been very nice. Honest to God, I cannot complain. You know, they know that, uh, they know our policy very well and it has to be perfect and they can live as i told you you become a psychologist and you know who really who, who really is telling you what and, and and most important is to carry to your guest i guess but uh, it is a fact that people are hurt and being hurt because people you, you see that is not they don't come with the same attitude you know everybody like like afraid of everybody so we have to observe the Health department uh, guidelines, you know, for that little by little, because it's open and it's, I guess it's the end of it. I was with the doctor the other day and the, the health department, and they told us that if there's another curve, it will be in December, but not as much because everybody is being vaccinated. So I, I don't know how can you predict that because I guess that's on the hands of God and not in ours, the way that I think. But, uh, but I don't think you can predict something that, you know, X disease is going to come and hit you in December. Uh, the, uh, no comprendo. No, I, mean, I mean, if we will know that, we will know the lowerly numbers and all that stuff. Uh, absolutely. Uh, so it, it is hard for me what people are suffering, you know. Like. Once more, we'd li like to invite you to come over to Fuddruckers. Come try this icon burger from this icon restaurant of Laredo. And the reason I say icon, because once you've been here for well over two decades, you're part of the tradition of culture of the city. And uh, there's more to come, and please enjoy. Come out here, say hi to Mr. Marina, and I think you, you have a wonderful time. Until next time, much peace. <laughs>